Сегодня я с удовольствием представляю вам нашу коллегу Терезу Веларус из Техасского университета. Она испанист, и сегодняшняя наша встреча будет посвящена теме, которую Тереза сформулировала как «Призрачные трансинтервенции. Испанское визуальное искусство о памяти, истории и травме в эпоху постчеловеческого». Я с удовольствием передаю слово Терезе. Большое спасибо за вообще согласие участвовать в нашем проекте. Очень большая честь принимать вас здесь сегодня. Thank you very much. All right. um, thank you for being here in the, this evening. I really appreciate it. It's uh, cold, or at least for me. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm from Barcelona originally, and which is warmer. And then I live in Texas now, which is even it's very, very hot. <laughs> so, but thank you so very much. And um, it is a pleasure and an honor to be able to share my research with you guys. Um, it is my first time in Moscow, in Russia, uh, and I'm thrilled to be here with you. Thank you, of course, to Daria Pirkina uh, that has made my visit to the National Center uh, here of Contemporary Arts possible through the project of the human condition. And I will visit the uh, exhibit at the Ekaterina, Ekaterina Foundation, and I am really hoping um, to see it and be delighted by it. Um, I hope my lecture today uh, can contribute a little bit at least to the reflections sponsored in the project and the exhibit. Um, how to be and stay human in the face of the drama of history. Uh, and I was very taken by, by that call, you know. I don't know if we can stay human for longer, but we still are, so that's good. Uh -huh. Thank you, Daria, for having me brought to the center. So I will try to go slow uh, and, um, and see if it works with uh, English, Russian. Mm -hmm. um, we now move, or seemingly move, from localized material systems of governability and finance to a global virtual nomos fueled by artificial intelligence. The concept, because of that now, the concept of trans with all its spectral ramifications become once again quite relevant, I would say. Well, it can be said that we humans always live in a transitional stage since we cannot conceive a present without a past or a future. And the experience of each present, however, is always particular to each epoch. Our existence, our experience as humans and particular beings is marked today by the current transitional move taking place from analog to binary modes of decoding our world. And when artificial intelligence is tackling neuros neurosciences in order to break into the human, in human quote, you know. So then my aim, uh, lecture today aims to focus on that particular trans experience in relation to memory and historical trauma, or the drama of history as the project of the center states. And I'll start with um, a reference to Martin Heidegger. Uh, he told us in the beginning of Being and Time that Dasein, a term which is purely an expression of being, he says, always understands itself in terms of its existence. So Dasein understands itself because it exists. That is, in terms of a possibility of itself. To be itself or not to be itself. So either it is or it isn't. Very simple. When we have that sign, then we or we think that sign, a sort of kind of general that sign, the possibility of existence has already taken place. Just as the human or being human has already taken place at the very moment we are born. That sign has either chosen these possibilities for itself, says Heidegger, or got itself into them or grown up in them already. So, while existence with a Z in Heidegger refers to, I quote, that kind of being towards which Dasein can comport itself in one way 
or another, and always does comport itself somehow, somehow only the particular Dasein decides its existence, and either it does so by taking hold or by neglecting a particular mode or another. So the Dasein general, it is or it isn't, but it is, if it is, and when it is, because of the existence, the particular uh, Dasein, you know, uh, can actually choose. Yeah? So I will do this or I will do that. Hmm? Then, following up onto Heidegger's point, I would like to propose an imaginary exercise in which we sort of conceive Dasein as the human. It is not that here Heidegger talks about being, you know, but I propose it to think of sort as a human. And artificial intelligence, AI, as an entity aiming to comport itself, conform itself as a particular Dasein. That is, if it makes sense, that which moving towards the human, I'm talking artificial intelligence, as that thing, let's say, that moving towards the human or towards being human is aiming to do so by taking hold or by neglecting along the way different modes of possible existence laid out in front of it, that, that what Heidegger, in fact, we call existential, okay? Yeah? Mm -hmm. The question of existence never gets straightened out except through existing itself. The understanding of oneself which leads along this way can be ex uh, called existential, says Heidegger. Yeah? So that's why I'm placing artificial intelligence as that thing uh, that is going to be deciding and has in front of, in front of it this canvas. What artificial intelligence, AI, has in front of itself to help it lead itself toward the human existing and existence is an astonishing amount of data stored in the human brain. It needs, therefore, artificial intelligence needs to analyze it, decode it. But since the question of existence, again, according to Heidegger, is one of Dasein's ontolo um, uh, ontical affairs, this would not require that the ontological structure of existence should be theoretically transparent. So artificial intelligence is going to move. Mm -hmm. uh, as human existentiality, could then be conceived as an extensive, infinite amount of data able to be structured for analysis by artificial intelligence without caring for the question of existence itself being theoretically transparent. Okay, so that is what I think it is somehow at the core of the current mind mapping frenzy which is all around us, no? An artificial intelligence self-learning technique using real-time feedback scanning. So for instance, researchers at Princeton University and the Intel Labs um, have developed software that enables cognitive neuroscientists to map the map in real time. So con continuously reading the subject's mind in real time as they are thinking, feeling, and reacting to stimuli, Algorithms decode neural data and reveal how brain activity affects learning, memory, or other cognitive functions. Yeah. So depression is actually one of the main goals today, so to get rid of depression. So previous research by Princeton and others had already established that depressed people tended to focus on negative, negative attractors such as images of people screaming or crying or photos of disasters such as oil spills. Subjects were to set of overlaid images of neural scenes and sad faces and participants were asked to pay attention to the scenes. Um, then the brain scans made the task more difficult and the proportion of scene stimulus was receding by fading it out. So they were slowly, the algorithms of artificial intelligence are kind of getting rid of the sad images and uh, substituting it for like more um, uh, cheerful ones. As the subjects continue to receive feedback, okay, 
um, they began to shift their focus towards the less negative images even after the reinforcement ended. So that it continues. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from gender, gender to neutral, or from human to post-human, from cyborgs to bots, from the nation-state system of global order to political globalization, truth to post-truth, material cash to finance and virtual bitcoins, reality to virtuality, and last but not least, from democracy to we do not know yet what, human existentiality in Heideggerian terms is, the, that is, the canvas constitutive for entities to exist is being transitioned from the human to the emerging artificial intelligence, AI. True, the process is still somehow imaginary, still we are not quite there, somehow still science fictional. Moskian, Hawkingian, singularitarian talk of summoning the demon and existential threats to our survival seem overstated by many, and at least they say, for now, we are humans. So, we are human, but nevertheless, the degree in which AI algorithms can already decide among the vast possibilities offered by the human canvas, experience on what to neglect and what to take hold is really staggering. We are, we like it or not, deep living into the trance mode. Being the visual arts, one of the fields where the tensions are perhaps best exposed. Our epoche is reeking in virtual and visual technologies, being the human body one of the major icons of exploration. In Spain, a variety of figures and visualization of on the transhuman condition have lately been exposed in different art platforms by contemporary artists, filmmakers, thinkers, performers, and activists. The parting and drawing from earlier trans practices and propositions, the romantic vampire or the avant-garde in the 20s and 30s, the 60s, and especially in Spain, from the Spanish transitional movida, an underground movement that uh, came to life in the mid-70s, um, they set the shift into an existential mode plagued by forensics, biometrics, coding, data harvesting, visual scanning, image saturation, lack, production, fluidity, and dissolve, all fueled by certain surveillance systems of artificial intelligence visualizations. This is Jaime Del Val, uh, born in Madrid in 1974. Uh, he's a transdisciplinary media artist, philosopher, activist, promoter of the Metabody Institute and the non-profit organization Reverso, an organization that takes its name, Reverso, as a metaphor for contagion, contagion from an antibody actually called Reverso, which is a synthetic virus. So he's a meta-composer, a musician, visual, dance, intermedia artist, performer, and post-queer activist. And his project, Metabodies, it's par part of Metatopia, departs from bio and techno concepts such, for instance, there are plenty, but one of them is amorphogenesis, another ultra-portability. Ultra-portability, of course, referring to the increasing capacity of mobile smart devices to hold and stick uh, in and on a variety of places, including the body, included inside the body, obviously, to enhance performance and scan, and scan the brain. Um, amorphogenesis refers to a process used actually in agro or agri-biotechnology uh, for developing countries and to produce genetically mutated or improved produce, um, plants, uh, food. It refers to the, I quote what it is, uh, this uh, amorphogenesis, is the initial stage in which the enzymatic hydrolysis of cellulose is, is usually characterized by fiber swelling and fragmentation of cellulose aggregations into short fibers. I mean, we are not gonna go into this very technical uh, stuff, no? But as you can see, um, Del Val, what, is, what he does, he uses all these um, uh, new um, uh, technologies, biotechnologies, uh, to present, um, to display uh, uh, the body that I will present to you today. Um, 
uh, Jaime de Val's proposition strive to pay attention or to pay notice to the increasing cannibalization of artificial intelligence into the human mind and body, aiming to deplete all experience from it in order to transvas it for onto itself. That is, artificial intelligence aiming to the moment of singularity. Singularity, I, I'm guessing you, you know what it is. It is the moment said that uh, robots would become human or will the pass, uh, pass the humans, no? So, uh, so artificial intelligence aiming to the moment of singularity, harvesting the human experience, holding on to the perceived good, efficiency, enhanced performance, multi-production, and neglecting what in fact forms, I would say, it is the proposition, the kernel of the human condition that I would say, and I propose, it's trauma. So, mm -hmm, so the, the artificial intelligence doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, as we see here, no, so this is the meta body no, that the Val is proposing. Uh, so the meta body moves in a cocoon. Um, it is all wrapped up, right? Like a sort of bee queen hatching in a virtual site a self-sufficient organism with a mind of its own, detached and indifferent to the old or analog order of the nomos, of the land, of the law, and it breathes in a living system akin to a hive mind of pure efficiency, a hive mind already belonging to the era of artificial intelligence and secondary biotechnologies. The Val's emergent techno body, however, for, from, oh, okay, okay, we're going to see a, just a little bit of, of that scene. Okay, so a little bit to give you the, the sense of it, okay? Okay, so the, the Val emergent techno body, however, for all its detachment from the old nomos, is embedded into a particular traumatic experience that the nanotechnology supported by artificial intelligence are set to dispose of. In this case, the Val's techno body is tied to the Francoist regime of Spain and to the history of violence of the Spanish Civil War. The Val's cyber body is a variation of the transhuman cocoon displayed often in his, in his multimedia installation. But this cocoon, this meta body, is a reminder, in fact, of that old body of the Spanish dictator, General Francisco Franco, who died a long death connected to a life supporting machine. Um, I'm going to show you, okay? So this is um, the, the body that also is sometimes emerges into the cocoon, the Jaime del Val. But this, and this is the, a picture of the dictator General Franco dying in the clinic, the hospital of La Paz, in November in 1975. Okay, so it was actually watching. It was actually watching on TV the dictator's agony that Michel Foucault stated that a secondary technology was in place, 
one that was leaving behind the technologies of discipline he had so extensively written about. It was a kind of an agnosis for him. We are in, in 75, so, and then we have all these 1980 um, last, um, uh, I mean, all, all he wrote during these five years, and then what he, it, it has come out posthumously that is very uh, interesting for us now. So he, he came to this anagnosis uh, watching the agony of the dictator on TV. Um, the death of Franco, he wrote, symbolizes the clash between two systems of power, that of sovereignty over death, characteristic of the previous nomos, so the discipline, punishment, etc., and that of the regulation of life pertaining to our virtual digital age and now artificial, artificial intelligence age, a biotechnology which brings together the mass effects characteristic of a population trying to control the series of random events that can occur in a living mass, a technology that tries to predict the probability of those events by modifying them if necessary, or at least to compensate for these effects. So, uh, so that's what we're doing now. So what we have here is uh, the moment uh, that we see clearly how the biopolitical modes of control are starting to be put in, in, in marcha, you know, in place. So we don't need the dictator alive anymore. Um, he's dead, he has been dead for months, but it doesn't matter. So the, the, the control is already set by the machines. So, so the, uh, all this new syst biopolitical system is collected under the nameless umbrella of NBIC, which stands for N Nanotechnology, Biotechnology, Information Technology, and Cognitive Technology, converging uh, into the new open site of occupation. And this new open site is a hive mind breathing an ominous purely economic and biopolitical order, emerging in a nomos of pure production and pure consumption, and aiming to increase productivity individual at mass level, and striving for the maximum improvement of human physical and mental performance. As it motto and canally states, if the cognitive scientist can think it, the nano people can build it the bio people can implement it, and the IT people, or now I would say IIA, artificial intelligence, can monitor and control it. So this hive mind organism that we've seen also expressed by Del Delval uh, is a hive mind organism of artificial intelligence conceived as existing in a self-sustained state a sort of new behemoth that would carry now within itself the state of all things, a post-political state, a new order, a new nomos that sells itself as a state of perpetual peace within a state of perpetual terror. So the acknowledgement of trauma is therefore of necessity, I think. As I tried to show, Heidegger's conceptualization of existence with a C as a projection of being by that sign does not seem sufficient as it does not seem to account for the real, with a capital R, in the Lacanian sense, or by the trace, the shadow that Derrida called avenir. Present and presence, no matter how present, are always shadowed by trace, by past and future, but it's avenir, by what it's found and always already a veneer that rings very close to the concept of vajut, the Arab word of which Derrida was probably aware as an Argelian Sephardi Jew, meaning precisely uh, vajut, not being, what the, but what is not being, but what is, what is found or experienced outside of being. 
um, Kent uh, Plamers, uh, which works in, in, in nanotechnology and biotechnology, has reminded us that the translation of the Greek via the Arabs back into the Latin uh, did not have being into their language. Uh, they had vajut, that is, what is found, and they had to make up a technical term for the part of being that exceeded vajut, which they called kun, to make. But then, when the Arab interpret interpreters of Aristotle uh, had their works translated back into Latin, then there was no word for vajut. And so, the term existence um, is standard um, outside, uh, um, was made up and given the same meaning as vajut, which also includes ecstasy in its range of meanings. Palmer says that uh, Heidegger's co-opting of existence is a very close move, a clever, excuse me, a very clever move, but it covers the original meaning of existence of existence as that which is found, but it covers over the uh, excuse me, as that which is found, meaning the rock besides the road that no one cares about. No one is projecting anything to it. So the rock beside the road, I'm just going to move here, um, that no one cares, that no other cares about, that no one is projecting anything into it, is actually nestling in the haunted house of trauma and memory. A hardcore ecstasy, a sort of a vajut achieved and found only through the process of withdrawing from terror precisely by acknowledging it. Retracing it otherwise, instead of blocking this pleasure, as the new smart drugs and biological drugs aim to do, we should perhaps embrace the three meanings of the pharmacon, as the Rida would have it. Remedy, pharmacon as remedy, pharmacon as poison, and as a scapegoat. A syndrome of withdrawing, actually, is what happened in Spain right after the, uh, the, uh, the death of General Franco and within the moment of the uh, political transition into a dictatorship and uh, going into a kind of democracy. I use this uh, metaphor of the syndrome of withdrawal um, because uh, the, when Franco, the dictatorship died, coincided with the, uh, the entrance in the country of heroin. So heroin uh, was the drug of choice at the time and uh, cannibalized and took over um, a lot of lives. Um, so it is the shadow of the art, the, the uh, experience, the withdrawal in the mid-70s on and 80s in Spain, um, a, a withdrawal, a political withdrawal, a uh, withdrawal also of heroin um, that, uh, for instance, can be expressed in this image here of, uh, by Jorge Rueda from 1975, which we see the a heroin um, addict and a vampire. Um, if you see his eyes, um, that is also kind of the back, um, not only memories, but the state of terror of the dictatorship uh, and of obviously the blood. This is a trans body, a meta body of the time, uh, in a way not as dissimilar as the meta bodies that, let's say, Jaime Delval is working on right now, or the trans movement of the bodies, the bodies, the body gets uh, exploded. Uh, and here we have another one. So specters, uh, forensics, uh, cadavers, um, etc., with a background here a background of uh, landscape that, uh, no, uh, that it is not alive anymore. This is uh, precisely the shadow of the specter coming back to hunt life and the new art landscape in Spain and elsewhere. Okay, so, um, and I'm closing here. So if heroin, oops, if heroin was the drug 
of the time of the uh, Spanish transition, um, unfortunately, is making a spectral comeback in the United States, at least, under the form that a hugely extensive uh, opioid epidemic, this time caused not by the horse, Patty Smith's horse, by, um, by, by um, um, pharma uh, with oxycodone. Thank you. Well, I would say that uh, precisely acknowledging trauma and without erasing it. Uh, in the, um, during the political transition in Spain, um, uh, there, it seemed that all the um, uh, celebration, et cetera, et cetera, was aiming to, um, to withdraw the, 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 the experience uh, of the violence of the Spanish Civil War and the dictatorship, right? But what I was proposing then um, uh, is that uh, all these kind of flashy celebration and was in fact exposing with their, uh, the, the, the people, the young people, um, the, the, the effects of this traumatic past. Uh, and many of them died um, because of heroin. So I made this kind of a connection between the withdrawal of heroin and the withdrawal of a system um, uh, that tried to erase the bad parts of it, you know? So it, like it didn't exist, you know? So it didn't happen. So now, what we have is uh, another transitional move uh, into a new nomos, nomos being the new order, right, uh, of, of things, uh, into uh, in what uh, artificial intelligence is harvesting all data and uh, um, trying to erase, let's say, depression, when depression is the major um, the major existential mode of our youth uh, right now, you know. Uh, so then there is this uh, uh, pharma, the pharmacology uh, gives these bio drugs, these are new drugs uh, that uh, are constantly uh, being um, enhanced. Uh, to modify, that's what I was uh, pointing to the, the Princeton um, research right now, no? trying to modify uh, all this depression, uh, substituting that um, 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 memories or visions or visualizations of um, sad things for kind of new ones, therefore erasing it what it is happening, so it is a prescription drug that is actually uh, causing a huge epidemic of, of opioids again. And, and in the United States, the youth are dying like flies. Um, so there's still more, you know, more drugs and more dying. So. That's what I was trying to say. So when we think of the new bodies that Del Bal was, um, is exposing you know, with uh, his project, uh, uh, I want to point to the link of the old transition times uh, when these things were all happening in a different way, you know? uh, but, uh, uh, but um, uh, trying to expose to point uh, the non-erasure. Uh? So what makes us human actually is trauma. I mean, everything, right? But uh, if we erase trauma, uh, we are not human. We are zombies. We are efficient um, machines producing uh, into production that we are disposed of very easily. Я тоже с вашего позволения задам вопрос по-русски. Вот в вашей книге Тереза 98-го, по-моему, года, который назывался «Эль Моно дель Десенканто». Эта книга была посвящена культурной критике испанского переходного периода, 
Вы писали о том, что в испанском обществе был принят некий пакт забвения вот, в эпоху La Transition, да, испанской перестройки после смерти Франка. То есть общество было совершенно не готово к тому, чтобы осознать, как-то принять вот те политические изменения, ту историческую травму, которую оно испытало. Да? Поэтому в 70-е, 80-е годы какие-то серьезные критические рефлексии относительно исторического прошлого не проводились. То есть был просто вот действительно принят такой пакт забвения. Потом, где-то в середине 2000-х, была попытка целого ряда институций все-таки этот пакт забвения преодолеть, когда были организованы такие крупные выставочные исследовательские проекты, как проект музея Магба в Барселоне, который назывался «Несогласие», и который как раз и был посвящен сбору материалов и критическому анализу того, что произошло с испанским обществом и искусством, естественно, прежде всего, этого времени. Но создается ощущение, что, тем не менее, вот этот процесс проработки вот этой исторической травмы не завершился. Да? То есть эта попытка все-таки осознать да, произошедшее не состоялась. Вот справедливо ли подобного рода утверждений, да, правильно ли я понимаю материал вот, сегодня представленный нам. Спасибо. When finally, let's say in the mid, uh, well, early 2000 and mid, uh, uh, mid yeah, 2005 or so, you just started to kind of dig in, you know, this kind of like even forensic uh, work, um, even to, to kind of dig up the bodies that, that had been left uh, Uh, disap has disappeared uh, in the aftermath of the Spanish Civil War. Um, all this, however, has stopped. It just not, and it, it, that's what is making me think. So I really, um, I'm grateful for your invitation because it made me kind of link the, what I had uh, written before, what is happening now. Why is this stop? Why has it stopped? You know, so these projects that started, yeah, in Barcelona, this agreement, uh, many other places, right? Um, because the uh, a possible answer, no, it is that we are uh, um, really um, uh, starting to dive really deeply into this new um, nomos uh, that. Um, uh, um, of the artificial intelligence. It is still not open uh, in the open, uh, but it is very, it is there. It is already there. Every time that we write, um, artificial intelligence harvests it. So now the tablets are all are coming with pens because all our writing is harvested. Mm -hmm. Every time that uh, we just send a picture, all the visual recognition, all our um, faces, humors, what is that I like, what is that I don't like. If you've noticed lately, and more and more so, uh, let's say Facebook is less open so and more tailored to whatever algorithms think that you want, that we want. Um, and so the choice, it is more and more limited, you know? So that is what I think it's happening. So why it did it stop, you know? Well, for many reasons, but one of them is, is that, you know? So, and uh, this kind of um, erasure is coming up again in different, in different forms. Mm -hmm. I have one more question. Um, I'm curious how to save, save privacy in such situation. Maybe you have some thoughts, um, in, like theoretical, also uh, lifeful, just for how to, yeah. I was referring to, like, uh, it's, um, uh, it's ex 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 we are exposed, totally exposed, and more and more, there is no It's all all out, you know. Um, the um, uh, that's what I was saying. So 
the pretense is a, a kind of a almost uncannily Kantian perpetual peace in a state of perpetual terror. Um, because not only because of the terror attacks, are also no, but not only because of that, it's because we are in a state, constant state of terror if we are all exposed all the time. So, what to do? Uh, <laughs> um, well, one thing is to keep thinking uh, and, uh, and, and, and keep thinking or, or keep practicing art if it is um, an art scene. Art, as I was saying, is one of an excellent way to, um, to kind of um, um, approach this, this, um, uh, this rock. Um, besides the road that nobody is, is wants to look at, I mean we do, but I do, but <laughs> the algorithms don't, right? So um, uh, um, it's a post-political, trans-political moment. So one possibility is how to how to make an incision is that we have a collective um, uh, that it works around the idea of infra-politics. Um, so infra-politics, like being, um, trying to, in the limit, you know, and trying to uh, go against all kind of hegemonic um, mode of, um, of sovereignty, which, because sovereignty also is is has moved to to the forms of the modern state to this kind of global um, corporate in artificial intelligence pharma etc you know? so it is very hard right now but uh, we have to we have to keep um, the haunted house um, acknowledged mm -hmm. With, it's not that day, hey, oh, let's all be, you know, terribly, awfully sad and depressed, no. But acknowledge, um, we have to acknowledge our, our terrors and our violences. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I would say. And art is expressing that, sometimes without knowing it. I mean, Del Val knows it, you know, but there is many... Um, there is this group of, uh, of women uh, musical, you know, um, the Pharmacon, they are very good um, and uh, they are very, very wild in a way, you know, so it's just like, you know, but what they do is kind of like expressing in different ways uh, this kind of um, withdrawal, the withdrawal of of the traumatic, you know? So if, if the traumatic is withdrawn and erased, then we just kind of like uh, come back in many different ways. One of them psychotic, you know? So, which is socially psychotic, which is terrible, you know? So everybody just going nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs>